All right, welcome back. Welcome to September. And we had a big down day after a holiday weekend. The Dow dropping, what is that? 626 NASDAQ, what is S&P down one, what is that? One, uh, 119 NASDAQ down 577. So a down day in a September, which is normal. September is typically a down month. Stocks usually correct in September. And uh, we have on the, uh, I guess on the horizon, the Fed wanting to cut rates. So we'll see how that goes. And of course, we got this horrible election coming up, which is driving me nuts. I just wish this would be over with. Uh, yeah, it is it is what it is. So let's look at what is going on. So as you know, I pretty much went to cash on what I could. I do have some Exxon yet. I've had this for years and years and years, the Exxon stock. Uh, what are we at? We're down 247, which is amazing. It was 118 a couple days ago. So that's kind of surprising. The uh, oil and the energies dropped. With Exxon, I have XLE, which is an ETF on all these energy and oil companies as well. And that dropped. I do have a sell order. I have to get close to 95 to dump the break even. I'm down on this one. I don't know why I bought it because I already had Exxon. So that was a dumb move on my part. So my goal on XLE is I want to get close to breaking even and just dump it and just hold Exxon. I don't need to have both of these and I just want to get it to cash because with the money I have in XLE, if I can get uh, the 5% money market, I'm happy with that. 5% of something is better than being down, you know, 20% or 10%, probably 10% at this point. I think I'm down 10% and I don't want to take the hit on that yet because I still think there's some upside with this market, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, Fed getting involved, but I don't know. Usually when they cut rates, the markets crash. So you just don't know. And Bitcoin may crash as well. It's just, it's just, you just don't know. It could go up, you know what? And if it doesn't go up, you know what? It's going to go down or it could do nothing at all and go sideways. Nobody knows. Nobody has a clue. Uh, what you can do is look at people that have money and what they're doing. And by that, we have Bezos dumping most of his Amazon stock year, uh, year months ago. Uh, uh, Warren Buffett, Jimmy Buffett's cousin. I don't know if they're related. Warren Buffett dumping his over half of his Apple stock and a lot of his uh, Wells Fargo stock. He knows something. He's going to cash, getting ready to scoop up after the carnage hits. Uh, Bill Gates Foundation in their portfolio, they dumped 90% of their stocks. Oh my God, if you go look at this back in February, these guys are getting out and they must know why. They know what's coming. And they're preparing, they're getting in the cash. So where am I at? We got Bitcoin down to 57.9 right now. Uh, let's see, TLT is the bond thing. And typically in a recession, which we've been in, come on, we've been in a recession. It's just, they're pushing these numbers up. And especially after what, a week ago, they lied about the employment numbers. The government, of course, never trust your government. I've worked with the government. Don't trust these people. They're the worst people ever. If you haven't had work with these people, they uh, have no ethics or no morality. Uh, they're kind of just douchebags, really. They're just, I don't know. You won't understand until you actually have to work with them. Not in working as a contractor with the government. Oh, dear God. It's fraud, waste, and abuse. And it's white-collar welfare. They're just sitting there all day, milking the system, butts in seats. It, they're horrible people. Anyway, um, I don't know how I got off on that. But don't believe the government because uh, when the... When the recession hits and it keeps getting worse and worse, the bonds hopefully will go up. And TLT is one such beast to look into. It may go up. Again, this is all entertainment. I do not really do well in the market sometimes. I'm an idiot. Sometimes the best thing is to, to do with your portfolio is to do nothing at all. Because uh, the old adage, time in the market is better than trying to time this monster. Because again, there's people out there with billions of dollars who know what they're doing. And they're trying to get you to invest, so you end up holding the bag once they cash out. Uh, with crypto, I have no idea if that's the same because we got Vanguard, Fidelity, and BlackRock and uh, MicroStrategy gobbling up all the McBitcoin. And uh, we don't know, I just don't know. I was trying to research how is the actual price of Bitcoin determined on a daily basis? What exactly, where, and what variables, and what computer Make the value go, say, right now, 57.8. What makes it go now to 57.92? What? 
What exactly does it? Is it someone posting a news article or something happened in the Middle East? No. What exactly is it? I cannot even find the answer. Is it volume versus purchasing? Is it amount of whales dumping? Because we had the Mount Gox crap. We had the Germans, uh, the Fatherland dumping all their Bitcoin, and that. But that got gobbled up. So I don't know. I wish there's no clear answer to why it goes up. And even with stocks, it's all perception. Oh, uh, Elon Musk can't find silver for his batteries. Boom, the stock crashes. But it was just a report. I mean, I don't know, but that was kind of a misreport. So then the stock comes back up. Oh, that was a miss of a fake quote or fake news. You know, it's just stupid. I don't know. Is it being manipulated? Is there an, is there some server which just basically is uh, controlling these prices, especially on crypto? I have no idea. I do laugh at the people in crypto. Having been there since 2017, into all the altcoins and all that crap. Oh, altcoins, Dogecoin, uh, XRP, uh, uh, all these other crappy uh, uh, Litecoin. That bit me too. All these other altcoins. Uh, just buy Bitcoin. These fools are in altcoins. It's so silly. Oh, it's going to go to the moon. It's not mid. No, it just went back down, crash. But Bitcoin's holding kind of a nice valuation. Even Ethereum crap, right? Just Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Stick with the winner. Stick with the one people know. Yeah, I bought into Litecoin 2017 and the idiot founder of Litecoin, it goes up. He dumps it all. Oh, I needed the money for something. And then less, every, leaves everyone holding the bag. And then it goes down from 300 down to back to 80. It's like, that's when I should have got out. It's like, all right, the owner, the founder is dumping it. He knows the game. It was that was pretty. You gotta you gotta be a, you gotta be very aware of stuff like that. Red flag. All right, what are we gonna do now? Oh, uh, let's jump into the Yo Max funds. They're they're kind of an interesting beast. I do have Misty, which invest is the uh, the option trading vehicle for the MicroStrategy stocks owned by Michael Saylor, who loves himself some Bitcoin. He is like, isn't he like the number two holder of Bitcoin behind the uh, evil empire of BlackRock? I think that may be it. So I do have Misty. They typically pay a buck 95 to two bucks per share. Huge. So the, the funny thing is though, is you buy Misty. And what I've been noticing with Misty it did go up to 35 or close to 40 once. So you can get some net asset value, net price appreciation. But lately, no, it's been kind of going down. Like my average cost on this is 25 bucks, right? So I'm down, I'm in the hole. But if you look at all the dividends I made each month, I'm broke even. So it's almost like you're balancing out the net asset value on the stock, on these yield max funds goes down but the dividends you get each month over time will basically offset that loss. So it's almost like, why am I doing this? The hope then still is like with any equity stock is you're hoping for the price appreciation. That's where the game is. So I don't know. I guess at the point you hope it only bottoms out to say 2191 right here and you're in a hole say for uh, 2000 bucks. But now Four months later, five months later, you actually made two thousand bucks in dividends. So now you you break even. Now, if it goes up, even though you're still under your um, average cost investing of twenty five, you recouped your money in dividends. And you know I haven't reinvested. I just I just get the cash and go to the, go to the cash, and then it gets five percent on a money market. But now you broke even. You lost ten thousand net asset value wise. You didn't sell, but you're down two thousand say, but now you're, you made 2000 over a couple months in uh, dividends. So now hope, the hope is that it goes up price wise. And then I don't know, it's almost like you could have bought a stock too, but I guess if it goes up now, you're still going to get uh, the net asset appreciation in the hopium that it goes up. In addition, yet you will still get the monthly dividend. Makes sense. So with these yield max funds, if you're new to them, go to the site, read about them. It's option stuff. I don't know anything about options. Uh, all I ever was taught, buy and hold, buy an index 500 fund and forget about it, which has done really well for me. When you start poking around your funds, your stocks is when you screw things up. Uh, you buy top grade companies, top grade like you know Procter Gamble, stuff like this, uh, Exxon. 
and uh, an index 500 fund and you set and forget, uh, maybe with this stuff, what I'm doing with Misty and index, the uh, yield max funds, I have a small set of money, a small set aside that I'm, you know, it's like gambling money. I'm playing with it. And that's with my Bitcoin money as well. The rest of my bulk of my money, I swear I got out. I have Exxon yet, which is a big chunk, but a lot of the other stuff I have as of September 3rd, 2024, I am in cash getting 5% in a money market. And I'm happy about that because I can sleep at night because God knows what's going to happen. We got pending World War III. We got crazy people in the White House. Uh, no one's even showing up for work there. They've been on vacation for the past 16 days. And today they had the dude sitting at a kid's desk on a fake White House set. What is going on? Are we in the Truman Show? Are we in Idiocracy? I have no idea, man. It's I, I, what is happening? It's kind of scary. That scares me. So then you wonder who's propping up the market. They keep uh, the trillion, the, the debt keeps going to trillions and trillions. And uh, I don't know what's going on, but I went to cash because I'd rather get lock in what I got. Got my 5%, which is nice check every month, you know, a nice deposit. But now I got my play money, which is misty. And I got that. But again, like I said, it's a wash right now for me because the net asset value, the appreciation price has gone down. I'm below, so I'm at red. And, uh, but in dividends, I made that money back. Makes sense. It's, it's, what's the point? So again, the hopium is it goes up like any stock, net appreciation. And um, I don't know. Or you hope that it doesn't drop any further. Say you're down 10%, you're down 2K or whatever. And then you made 2K back. So let's just hope that's the bottom. And then, then you start accumulating money. So then you have a, a two-pronged attack where you're now making dividends on the net positive side with the, hopefully the price not going any lower. And if it goes up, that's all the better because then you start regaining your capital investment. I don't know. It's just different ways to look at it. Up is better than down, I guess, right? All right, with Misty, Oh, the other ones are Connie. I don't have Connie. That's Coinbase. Fiat is something I'm looking at. Look at Fiat. That thing pays out hugely. It's almost like up to 111%. It's immense. And basically, it was up today. It's the uh, inverse trade of Coney and most of everything else, even um, even NVIDIA and, and Misty. So if you look at Fiat, you got 083 up. 3.92%, Misty is down five, uh, Connie is down six. So yeah, you can have both. You can do a, a pair trade, but that means you really got to watch it. I don't know. I think once you see signs of the market really starting to go, maybe you jump into these Fiat and these uh, other ones, these other short position ETFs like Crash, which is the... Uh, Inverse of Tesla. And uh, I, again, I'm in a hole in this one. Again, I'm making dividends, so I'm going to break even to counteract my loss. And then at that point, you can say, well, if you didn't really like it, maybe. But then if the thing's going to crash, the techs are going to crash. Tesla's a tech company, and uh, that may crash. And then crash will go up. And uh, I'll also get the dividend and net appreciation on that. So. Yeah, that's one way to look at it too. So with these Geomax funds, you can treat them as real estate. You invest the money into them, and then you're going to get your monthly rent. You know, your monthly uh, your monthly bills paid. You know, if you think about it that way, and that is a good mindset. So with Misty, I'm just going to hold. Again, it's money I don't need for the long term, or I mean, money I need for the short term. It's a long term bucket. Uh, after ten years, my other buckets are set. Where if I need cash and all that stuff, I'm good. But uh, these are these are. Uh, this is all my gambling money, just playing around, see what works. So far, like I said, I'm down, but I'm getting dividends, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to win in this world. It's hard to make things. And I just think sometimes you just got to buy and hold and walk away from it and then revisit it. Uh, yeah. And don't listen to anybody on YouTube. Never, never. Look, you, know, you can listen to them and then, okay, I'll go research and do some Googling myself and then see if uh, what this idiot says makes any sense. Or, you know, or just like walk away. One other guy I was watching, he, he's into the Gio Max stuff. He was all over the place. I'm like, man, dude, you're, giving, you're making me look crazy. And uh, I'm just like, I can't take it anymore. It's like, this is, you're not, it's too unstable. 
And so I had, I just had to unsubscribe and stop watching it. It was just, it was driving me nuts. And so go by your gut too. She's like, all right, this is just, it's for entertainment, but dude, you're stressing me out. So I just said, my, my plan is different. Buy these things and hold them. Day trading that crap? No. I mean, dude, you want to lose all your money? Day trade. It doesn't, I mean, you always end up losing. It's like gambling. It is gambling. You're just going to lose all your money. And if you're doing margin crap, ah, you're going to call you on the margin. Ah, don't do it. What I do, I do a lot of this stuff in a Roth account and it's, it, it's just easy for me. And I have a goal where I want to grow to a certain amount and I have a certain loss threshold as well. Like, oh my God, I'm done, done, done. Get out, get out, get out. You know, you have to set that range. You know, sometimes if you're dropping below 10% on a stock, maybe you should get out. I think that's probably a smart move because otherwise it's going to drop to 20%. And you're like, oh shit, you're holding the bag and then you're stuck. And it's not good. You're going to hope 10 years from now it's going to go back up. It's not a good feeling. All right. And that's the problem. You buy an index 500 fund or something, set and forget. Boom, that has done me well. All right. What do we got else? Fiat I'm looking at, but I wanted to pull back a bit. So I think with the down market today, uh, what I usually do is I go over here. This is a Yahoo page. Yahoo is kind of a crap site. Remember them years ago? They tried to be the big thing to Google. Nothing happened. And I think they had a lawsuit, Yahoo to Google. Google was just suppressing Yahoo, whatever. Something happened. It was years and years ago. But one good thing came out of Yahoo. They're kind of lefty leaning with their crap. The news, I kind of ignore that. I just go to their financial page. They got a good financial setup. Google never came out with a good financial page. So Yahoo, whoever run, runs their Yahoo Finance, actually does a good job. Everything else about Yahoo is crap. So you can go up here, you can look at your S&P 500, your main, your main indicators, and get a feeling for what happened today, obviously. And if you want to see what's going to happen tomorrow, if you're up at midnight and all that stuff, you can go ahead and look at these futures on the Nikkei index. This is in Japan. And then what happened a month or so ago is they corrected. And then the next morning we had our, like a 10% pullback, 5 to 10%. And but it recovered, but uh, you can get a good feeling how the how the day's going to go when you look at the uh, overseas markets. You know, while you're sleeping and snoring, get ready for work. What is the Japanese Nikkei doing? What is the Europe market doing? Uh, I don't believe in. I don't know. I'm the big fan of the Europe market, but you can see it gives you warm and fuzzy what's going to happen the next day. But uh, again, sometimes sometimes it's best to do nothing at all and not touch it. Like me, I dumped the video once, and then the damn thing shot through the roof. I went, damn. Really shot up, and I did, I made a couple thou, but I could have made a lot more, and I just was stupid and touched it because I was happy that I broke even again. You know, you just don't know. I should have known Pelosi was buying it. I mean, that's why I bought it because she bought it. I can't remember the reasoning, but that was dumb on my part. Yeah, like I said, sometimes it's best not to touch it at all. You know, uh, let's see. The other one, Nvidia, I think is overbought. I think all the big investors in Nvidia are dumping it. Uh, it overbought and people just had enough and they're getting out of that. That may be part of the pullback here as well. Uh, yeah. And then with NVIDIA, the inverse one is dips and that's up 20. These things come out, these yield max funds come out at 20 bucks and then they go from there. Like Tesla's down at 13. That has not done too well. I am not sure why because Tesla's up. Crash too. I, you know, I got in at 19 or 20 and I'm down. But uh, like I said, you still get the dividend. So once you recoup, if you don't like the fund, just wait till you get the dividend accumulated where it offsets your loss and just call it a day and get out and then say, okay, that was a dumb investment for me. Uh, didn't work the way I wanted, but you got your money back. So there's one, you just had to wait a few months. So that's one way to look at it. All right, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to figure out what to do when they get into dips and fiat. I don't know what the dips interest dividend is each month yet. They haven't published it. Fiat is huge. Go look at it. Yo, Max Fiat. Uh, and I think in a down market, which is coming, nobody knows when, right? It's got, I don't know if they're going to keep this propped up for the election to make people think the economy's better than it really is, which is, I think it's horrible right now. Jobs, businesses are going out. Restaurants are going out. People are not spending money. People are not, what else? What is just, people are not going to Home Depot. People just are saying, well, I don't need to buy that right now. I don't need to fix my house. I don't want to spend 4,000 bucks. It can, it can just wait. I need that money to feed my family. So I don't know. We might have a huge depression coming. It might be a, what do they call it? The lost decade again. Like we had, was it the 70s? Where nothing did anything at all for 10 years. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, one last thing. I got Wolf, which is down usually again. This is a Bitcoin miner. 
small equity company and I was hoping it'd go up up to like seven or eight bucks, but no, I'm just hoping now it goes back to five bucks so I can get out. And uh, yeah, lesson learned. I'm not even getting a dividend on this one. This was just like a speculation. It's just hope that the miners do well, but I don't know how Bitcoin's going to react. It is not behaving the way you should with the having having happened. Is uh, that makes me nervous because there is no pattern. People try to identify patterns in this crap. There are no patterns. You may see a pattern for like two days. But when you look over four years and, oh, look at the pattern. No, because the halving was supposed to, everything was supposed to take off after the halving, like, a, like I'm, say, eight weeks later. Nothing. Uh, Bitcoin's still kind of holding at 57. It was the highest 70K. Uh, yeah, so we don't know. I don't know if it's going to break the 70 again. I was hoping it was going to break 100. There was so much momentum, so much talk. And I think that was the red flag. I, I fell for that before in 2018. Whatever. Oh, it's gonna go to 100k. Blah 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 blah. No, I think when people aren't talking about it is when it's gonna go to 100k. Or now people are hoping, oh, it's gonna go to 300. No, it's gonna go down. Am I correct? If they come out with the lower interest rates, Bitcoin might drop to 45. You just don't know. But uh, yeah, I do hold Bitcoin. The only problem is I'm not getting anything for it. I'm not getting any dividends. I'm not getting nothing. It's just sitting there. That is the beauty of the uh, yield max ETFs is you can jump into Misty, which buys, you know, deals with the underlying company MicroStrategies through options. They don't own MicroStrategy stock. It's all option trading. So I don't know anything about that. Let them do the work. You're, you know, you're paying them in fees, right? Whatever the expense ratio is. Uh, and then, uh, the, but the beauty is if Bitcoin goes up or you're waiting for it to go up, you're going to get those dividends each month. So that's the pro and con of holding the actual Bitcoin versus investing in a derivative some of the derivatives are there are Bitcoin ETFs like FBTC and Fidelity. You buy Bitcoin through Fidelity. But again, not your keys, not your coins. They hold it. So it's not your coins. If Fidelity goes under or closes their shop, you're not getting your Bitcoin back. It's gone. It is gone. You don't own it. So you got to think about that. And while you hold Bitcoin there, you're not getting any dividends or anything. It's just Bitcoin being held in their wallet. Uh, makes it easier to move and trade, blah, blah, blah. Um, but... Again, that's one problem. That's one derivative. The next outlier would be is these Misty funds or these other these other ETFs that deal with Bitcoin prices, spot price and that. You can look at those um, and check those out. And like Coinbase, here at Connie. You can buy Coinbase if you want because everyone's using Coinbase to process their fees. But now there's a lot more places also doing that work. So Coinbase is going to lose their market share, I think. It just seems normal. More competition. Connie is one that does the options for Coinbase. Uh, the other, uh, where are we at? The other derivative type purchase play on Bitcoin is a Bitcoin miner like Wolf. And, uh, you know, they, they don't go one to one with Bitcoin, which is interesting. So that's an interesting play for me. Uh, so I got Bitcoin, I got derivatives, and I got the miner. So I pretty much cover the gambit. And uh, right now, getting the dividends with the yield max is a sweet thing. Like I said, you got to deal with the, the loss of price appreciation, net asset value in a down market, but you're still getting dividends and you can choose to reinvest them and buy more Misty or more of these yield max ETFs as you get paid every eighth of the month, or you just take it the cash. You know, that's your call. Treat it as income, you know, as a paycheck. You know, you're getting a couple thousand a month or a thousand a month, depends how much you buy. And there you go. Anyway, that's it today. Um, I got 23 minutes in. I just want to do an update. I have not done a crypto financial update in a while because there really was not much to talk about. We're all kind of in the summer doldrums and now September hit. Typically, the markets do not do well in September. So just ride it out. Hey, let's just get through this month and let's see what happens. Let's see if it gets better. But um, yeah, I'm not touching anything. I may if dips goes down. If dips goes down right here, not dips. I don't know what the interest. I have to look at the dividend payment. I want to say until they publish what they're paying each month, I'm not going to worry about dips. Fiat's the one I care about because it is right up there with uh, Misty for the monthly payout, which is huge. Uh, yeah. So we'll see how well that one does. No, let's see. In five days. Well, they're going to announce it in two days and then you get paid a couple of days later. So we'll see what Fiat is really at. So 22 is not bad. 
like I said, when these guys come out, when they introduce these ETFs, they come out at a, a price of 20 and they go from there. If they get too low, like in the 10s, they may do a reverse split and eh, that's not good. So once they get down here, like um, Tesla's kind of low, that may be due for a reverse split once it gets to 10. Crash is hovering. It's been about 15, 15 to 17 range. You know, well, let's look over here. It's been, whoa, it's been down to 1247. See, it was up to 22. So I'm saying anything below 12, it gets close to 10, you're in jeopardy of a reverse split where, you know, it's, I don't like that. I just, I mean, we just, I don't know. You just hope you recouped your loss if it's going down and then you just call it a day, call it a wash and get out and then get into Misty or something else. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So watch that. If these yield max funds go down again, you want to buy these if you're interested in them the day they pay out the dividends. So usually the eighth of the month for Misty. So on the eighth, the price will drop accordingly and you know, approximately the price of the dividend they pay out, which is most dividend companies do. So say we're at 22 bucks, it may drop down to 2050, you know, and then buy in at the low price. And then that also bring down your, uh, your average purchase price as well. Depends how much you want to put in. So anyway, that's all I got. I got a little message I got to look at. Uh, a little update on my investments. Like I said, I'm a bit nervous about what's going to happen to these markets. So I am just playing with the play money right now. My big holding yet in stocks is Exxon. And I think in recessions, I, I, from, I, from what I heard, is oils do well, Exxon does well in recession. And uh, so I may just keep holding that. I do get a dividend every quarter on that. It's about 3, 3 to 3.5% or something. Nothing super great, but I've held this forever, so I just may continue holding it. Uh, yeah, what are you guys doing? Let me know below. Are you buying Bitcoin? Or is everyone still talking about it? Are we just holding, hunkering down? Everyone's back at school. Summer's over, and you're going to forget about it, get through this damn election. If we have an election, you just don't know. Uh, it's just getting crazy out there, man. I don't know. Stay safe, stay inside, keep your head on a swivel and just protect your family. Keep an eye on your friends and just uh, be smart because I don't know, it's getting dangerous out there. But if you can just build your wealth as you can in this market, be smart about it as well. Don't go crazy and uh, try to day trade <laughs> unless you're a professional and knows what they're doing. Buy something, research it. Do you want to go to cash? Do you want to go to bonds? Uh, how much more can this market take? Is everything overbought? You got to just be realistic about that. What's your comfort level? So if you're just, I mean, if I had a lot more runway years and years, I'd be in cash until everything kind of pulls back again and then jump into an index 500 fund and just set and forget, or maybe look at some growth fund. Some of these zero cost, no fee funds like Fidelity has. You don't want to be paying these guys fees 1% fee over time can be a million bucks. You got to watch that. So, um, yeah, so no fee funds go to Fidelity, look at their no fee index funds, and uh, maybe that might be a good solution for a lot of people. Again, the yield max and, uh, ETFs are me just playing to see how well they do. High risk, high risk, high risk. Warning, warning, Will Robinson. Uh, uh, play, play with these at your own risk. <laughs> do not listen to me. Uh, you can only, you can always only lose everything. Yeah. Uh, you can't get a zero. Uh, yep. So anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for listening. And, uh, talk to you later. I am out. Have a good day. Boom.